and welcome to Recall the Midwife. We are three super fans and each week we watch an episode and talk about it. Today we are talking about Series 8, Episode 4. I'm Becky. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. A reminder that this week's episode deals with prejudice, traumatic birth, abortion and mortality. So if those topics are ones you would prefer to skip this time, we understand and hope you join us for the next one. In this week's episode, we meet Jeannie Tennant, a mother of two and active member of Trixie's Keep Fit group. When Jeannie discovers she is pregnant with her third child, painful memories from her childhood with her mentally unstable mother come to the surface. Jeannie is determined to abort her pregnancy, but it goes terribly wrong. Jeannie develops a terrible infection and passes away and leaves her family and the staff of Nonatus grieving. Mrs. Silla Singh is pregnant with her first child, and it happens that her mother, Enid Wilson, is as well. They had a falling out almost a year earlier when Silla and her husband, Pardeep, got married and have barely spoken since. They both end up in the maternity home at the end of their pregnancies, but Silla develops toxemia and is at great risk after her baby is born. Enid watches over her grandson while she waits to hear how her daughter is doing, and the women are able to reconcile after Scylla recovers. Scylla is there when Enid delivers, and the bond between mother and daughter is restored. Lastly, Sergeant Wolf asks Phyllis out to a photo exhibition, hoping to grow their personal connection. He missteps while trying to impress, and Phyllis demurs graciously when he attempts to redo the attempted date. So, girls, love is in the air, but... No, no, one-sided love. love. <laughs> one-sided love. Also, by the way, I have my I have my heroes and zeros in my mind. So when, when we get to the end of the episode, I, I may be able to go first. I've got them written down as well this week. I never normally do. Oh, oh. Well, should we start by talking about Scylla and Pardee? Because we just had a discussion about what our trigger warning should be. And we were going to go with racism. And I was like, it wasn't racism. We well, she with said prejudice. it wasn't. Yeah, she's like, oh, I don't mind that. But it's just that. And then she said something really rude about the household that her daughter was living in. And it's like, well, you know, this seems like something's going on here, ma'am. If you're being honest. But once, once he got the job working on the underground, she was fine with him. So I really mm. don't think it was racism. I know. But Bex, like that, that was only after so much other stuff happened well let's actually talk about what happened first off i was shook when enid was they were like oh she's 44 and she's having a baby and i was like oh my god i turned 43 <laughs> last week and i was just like yeah. i literally can't think of anything worse than having a baby <laughs> now <laughs> well can you imagine regardless of how old you were if you'd raised bobs to be like in her 20s and then all of a sudden it was like oh time for number two no thank you <laughs> although to be fair this is like kind of like the other storyline in the show as well, because obviously Jeannie's then had this surprise pregnancy. Yeah. The, the way the way they've taken it's been different. Anyway, sorry. So So mother and daughter are prego at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but the very start, you see Pardeep come out. And he, can I just say Pardeep was pretty I thought Pardeep was pretty fair. Oh, Pardeep was yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, he was another <laughs> very cute husband. I, I, was like, I feel Pardeep. like we've said this quite recently as well. I feel like they're up in the game with the husbands here. To be honest, yeah, the they husbands really on this in this episode were not also what was Jeannie's oh, husband? Yeah, Frank. Called? Frank was pretty oh, yeah. fit as he well. Was Frank. Yeah, he had and he was those, an like, electrician as well. Yeah, he had all those like tight, tight sleeves. Ooh, just that were, like... is tight. An electrician who winks. <laughs> <laughs> no but you can't go wrong with someone who's got a trade <laughs> so you don't actually fancy you just think it'd be really useful in the house <laughs> no i did i did quite fancy him although i mean i'm gonna come on to this at one point he was in a brown yellow and bright blue outfit i thought that as well i thought oh that's very of the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was those polyester pants he was wearing he was really going for it yeah but party was so cute and so tall i was like yeah, yeah i would have i would have uh, gotten to a year-long fallout with my mom too if i couldn't have been with this man so yeah i would have ditched her super fast <laughs> no, I was well, thinking maybe the mom fancied him first <laughs> <laughs> well we're talking about me and and people who wink i watched bridgerton this week Oh! Series three of Bridgerton, and okay. Colin does a really sleazy wink at the start. And I was oh, like, he really uh, does. He really <laughs> girls. I saw I saw a TikTok not let, like long ago. It's like where it's like when Colin gives you the ick, and it's like right at the beginning of the first episode of season three, where he like like comes back from his travels and everyone's seeing him for the first time, and he's kind of like, hey, you know, and ev- like he's like really having that kind of like disgusting kind of like I'm so hot now, like oh, like I'm like this, you know, like man whore yeah. basically. And then it's like when you fall in love with Colin for real, and then it's like a clip from like later in the series when of part one where he's just like being much more like sweet and romantic and whatever like that. But I was just like, yeah, like Colin in the first episode of the of the season he was just kind of like too full of himself like too like overconfident yeah like he just thought he, you could tell he just thought he was like the hottest thing around and it was like no 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 <laughs> like this is this is no like you're gonna ha-. but then he then he kind of gets back to i'll never but forget anyway, back- 
a boy I went to school with, just really quick. We all went to yeah. university and his band got signed, right? And we all, it was, I really liked him. It was lovely. It was really quiet, unassuming. But when he first, we saw him that first Christmas after his band had got signed. We saw him in the pub and he was just so overconfident and so like, oh, hey, everyone. Oh, it was awful. Oh, anyway, then they got I dropped. It was fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not listening. What are you doing now? He's having a lovely life to be fair. I saw him the week. He's lovely. But, let's, um, hope he, let's hope he's an electrician, right? He never he's not an electrician. Trade. I can confirm he is not an electrician. Uh, so he didn't get go on to get trade. No. 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 Did you did you like the first half of season three, Bex? I loved it so much. So I'm re- I'm quite glad I've just not got around to it till now because the next half comes out on Thursday. I know, I know. I have I really want to do a rewatch, and so yeah. So I'm, I'm that's really annoyed go. me because I'm out on Thursday night oh. and I'm on Friday night. Save it for the weekend, Al. Save it for the weekend. Yeah. Then I was then even going to read the book. You read the book? No, I'm even going to read the book. How many are loads the different to the book, though? Right, should we get it, back to Call the Midwife, guys? Well, I'll just say that it's different, <laughs> but there's a lot of important stuff that's the same, and that's what matters. And so, yes, read the book. You will love it. You will die. You'll, you'll be so into it. And I loved her makeover. Like, she's really... Oh. So- but I was just like, I'm so into this. I know. This. I want to watch. Uh, I'm watch sorry, guys. Just... We're stopping this now. We're going back sorry. to Call the Midwife. This is a Call the Midwife podcast. We will do a Bridgerton podcast and we'll think of a really witty name, right? But for now, <laughs> okay. uh, if we must, if we must. Okay, let's talk about Call the Midwife. <laughs> So they're at each other's throat, Scylla and okay. Enid. And Enid's, oh, she's the right one, isn't she? Oh, she's yeah. a sour face. She is. Oh. She's very she's unforgiving. Rude to everybody. She's rude to everybody. I like the way Miss Higgins really put her foot in it, being like, oh, what a big support you must be to each other. I didn't know if she knew that they weren't speaking. So said no, that she as a had bit no idea. A... She had no oh. idea. Well, she was because just the... putting her foot in her mouth then. Because the death look that Enid gave uh, when she said that, and then and then Sheila was like, "Okay, come on now, Mrs. Singh, like back <laughs> over here, off you pop and everything." And it was just like the tension you could cut with the knife. No, Miss Higgins had no idea. She never would have said that if she knew what was going on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then, um, Scylla, the young, the daughter, has got high blood pressure, and they're a bit worried about it. Oh, she's but got she so it's... many telltales. I could have diagnosed her. Well, yeah, but no. Oh. We're I mean, experts yeah, but... now, Beth. We're basically yeah. midwives. I know. I mean, I feel like I could deliver a baby. After reading the third Call the Midwife book and like the first two, I yeah, I definitely feel like I could I'm, at least be. I'm not going to go that far, but I would probably have been able to di- di- uh, diagnose toxemia. As long as it wasn't a complicated birth. Yeah, I think I could you do think it. I think you'd be fine. This is like that thing where um, you ask men if they can land an aeroplane. <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I've learned more about childbirth than any of those men's know about planes. So I do think I have one up on them. I don't really know much about childbirth. I'm telling you now, I, I didn't read much at all. I had one and I couldn't, I was just going to, every time I looked at a book, I thought I was going to faint. I thought I had, I have to stop. Oh, you know, on a previous episode, Alex talk about, talked about the photo, the first photo of her after she'd given birth. Oh, how she looked like a troll. Now I've seen it. I got it to show it to me. Oh, of me, of my face after giving birth. Oh, yeah. you're, oh, you thought you looked terrible after giving birth, but you thought no, Bob no, it's looked not like about looking terrible. It's the fact that my facial expression is literally like the most. She horrified. looks good. I think, considering what she went through, I think she looks good. But she's just got this look of what I don't want to swear. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, it's just happened. Like, it just personifies that expression it really oh, does it's the most word. awful first photograph like i don't really ever want no, to show it's not an awful photo. Oh, i think you look lovely in it you just look like no i mean for her to see that photo of like that's instant regret what is this <laughs> 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 sorry bobs if you're listening views. oh man oh anyway so the mom is told that she's got to have the baby at maternity home we can all see what's happening here already yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah. She's like, uh, what really got made me laugh though was the way that she was trying to like bully Sister Julianne. And Sister Julianne was like, No, you're 44, you're going to have to do it in the, in the maternity home. And she was like, You know, I'm getting massive. I'm like the size of a house. It's bad enough. I've been caught out at this time. She's like, Well, you should have a maternity gear. Well, well I'm not having a second hand. And she was like, No, we're, we're washing very well. She's like, You've toughened up in your old age, haven't you? <laughs> it made me absolutely lull. Mm. And then also, Sister Julianne saying to her, Isn't love? the most important thing and the mum was like nah <laughs> <laughs> she's like no hard pass no i don't think so i'm really not with you on that one. Oh. oh man but we were worried about mrs Singh anyway because of like beck said she had some of these symptoms like high blood pressure she had some swelling in her legs and so we weren't sure what was going on and and then who visited her at home one of the ladies sheila. sheila 
Fila and Sister Frances was with her. Can I say one yeah. thing about her home? The first scene we saw about them at home was she lives with her husband and then lots of other men. Um, it's like only, she's obviously house. only that married to her husband. Really- I know it did make it sound really bad. shared house. In a shared house, yeah. It made it sound bad, sorry. But she lives there. What really annoyed me was they were just having a lovely time, having their lunch or their tea or whatever. And Pardeep shouts, I want to have have a meal with my wife. Shut up. I was a bit like, <laughs> is there a house too? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the thing. I'm like, what is the actual arrangement here? Like, because all you see is really like one communal room. And it's like, mm, uh, uh. They'll have their, room, their own room in the house, won't they? Yeah, I just was like, hmm. I mean, it wasn't Sheila, that. Sheila passed it. Sheila said it was, you know, clean and everything. And then Sheila was like, when the baby has two parents, the baby has the best of everything. And I thought, yeah, but there's a horrible mold on that wall, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what we what we haven't said yet is that there's a scene where the mom comes in. Yeah. Also, like, I will say, like, having two parents isn't always the best. It's not. Yeah. Two parents doesn't equal best. Okay. Well, that's 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 like that's like the difference between like twenty twenty four thinking versus like nineteen sixty four yeah. thinking. You know what I mean? Like we've. I think two parents kind of... who love you is great. Yeah. One parent is an absent and rubbish. Sometimes in separate households. Yeah. Well, it's Sheila. Sheila is like just obviously implying like a kind of a straight nuclear family, and so like that's I think what you're saying, right, Bex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like we don't have to be that rigid about it anymore. Like, yeah, it's great. No, to have I, I actually do believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching Sister Wives, actually. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> but so Sister Julian has gone to see Mrs. Wilson, and that's when they have the conversation about her going to the maternity home, and she's like, "Okay, fine." And then she puts some turny gir- girdle on, and she's like, "Oh, this isn't actually so bad." And so then Sister Julian is like, "Well, you know, what about like love and family and everything?" And, and you and she's kind of like very dismissive, like Alex said in the moment, but then clearly like it takes root in her because she goes goes to mrs singh's house while sheila's there doing one of her checks and then pardeep is also there he answers the door and he comes back and he's like we have a visitor and the look on his face when he <laughs> says that he's like oh i really don't know what's gonna happen here and then he turns and mrs wilson comes in enid and she you know she says something about like oh my god it's worse than i thought this place is disgusting and then she and sheila's there going like i'll get you a cup of tea you can all sit down together as a family and I thought, yeah oh, like like it. you're gonna like have a nice conversation try to all be polite and everything like that and then and she makes another comment about like the fact that it's like not a nice place Don't to be. Don't worry, and, like... I am not saying I will wipe my feet on the way out, which is pretty good shade. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> She's just so <laughs> mean the whole time. And then she was like well i've deemed it fit for a home birth or you know something like yeah. that and she's like, like you know what i really don't care about your opinion nurse uh i'm out of here and so then you know Scylla's like we'll just go i don't want you around anyway and Did then... she remind you guys do you remember there was the woman who had the stroke and her mum was a bit of a cow oh no she oh, didn't, like... didn't no. i didn't think she was as bad as that but i mean like she's just a bit of a cow like it's not you she's just a bit of a cow kind of yeah because even for her because as well even... Even she's mean no. to her own husband too. Yeah, remember? she is a bit of a cowback to her like, own like, husband. Yeah, she is. Don't be going down the pub tonight. Yeah, because then the husband on the way out is like, good luck, sister. And she's just like, oh, okay, <laughs> thanks. You know what I mean? He's like, bye, I'm out of here. I'm going to go like, I'd literally yeah, rather be underground in a tunnel than be with my wife. She's also pregnant. Yeah, I was, I pregnancy was actually that, yeah. No, but come on, Bex. I mean, pregnancy doesn't mean you have a personality transplant, okay? No, I, I'm yourself. not going to lie. My husband will testify to the fact that I was an absolute nightmare. No, I know, I'm but the thing is, they, it. they had the falling out a year ago. She was already mean a year ago. Oh, that's before true. She was that's pregnant. true. That's true. Very. Yeah, very but we don't true. know. Yeah. We don't know how civil she was about it back then. She might have only well, started being a bit. No, Beth. You give it. Give up the ghost. None of us know. None of us know. We, we do. do it's it written into the story. Well, no, we know they fell out then, but we didn't witness it, did we? That's the point. They gave us the exposition. They said in the story, like, <laughs> I went with Singh. I, like, fell in love with him. We got married. My mom was a huge bleep about it. And so then we, like, haven't basically no, talked in any productive bleep. way since. No. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> we both happened to get pregnant. Me, probably somewhat intentionally, and her, just because, you know, she got caught up the duff. And then and here we are. So, like, yeah, she said that her mom was already, like, not nice about it a year ago. I don't think you can compare her with the other mother. I just mean that she's a bit of a cow. She's so mean. She's so mean. She's so she's rude about him. Mean. Anyway, Enid, Here's Enid thing, is a bit thing. of a cow. There's no reason. There's no reason for her to not like party. There's no reason. There's no reason she's for her fit. to be unhappy. If anything, she should be happy. A yeah, daughter exactly. has got someone that fit. He's handsome. He has a job. Okay. He loves his wife. He loves her daughter. He's going to be a good, like, there's nothing, there's nothing 
that you should be disapproving of with this man. He's well, no, I think, tall, it, I think a what, big plus. But he can't provide for us, and that's what she doesn't approve of. None of the men can provide for anybody in this show. <laughs> um, I think you'll find that Frank can. <laughs> Frank can, that is true. No, he can't, because they're in the same position as Pardeep, because they have their little canister where they're saving up so that they can move somewhere nice. So it's the exact same. It's exactly no. same. They are They're, in a flat, no. They are They're providing as flat. best they can. They have a situation that works for right now, but they're both still in a in a transitory uplift. No, they're, they're mobility just about uplift. to move. I they feel like, be- hang on, I feel like I'm referee today, you two. Let's Justice talk about, let's carry on talking about, the mum <laughs> is then admitted to hospital when a, to the maternity home when her waters break. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, the daughter gets, and I thought at first, because the daughter's got big, big ankles, she was admitted. And I thought, oh, was if, if, if Sister Julianne and Sheila orchestrated this? No, it just happened. Yeah, it really did just happen. It yeah. was just and the luck of the so, little draw. It was so, uh, like, wouldn't you have just hated being in the maternity home with those two? It, it was just oh, so they were, awkward. Yeah, they had so, so many. ridiculous about magazines and stuff. It was just so petty. And, I was and like, like one oh. turning the light on when the other turned the light off. And the thing I thought was, I was like, okay, I was kind of more on Scylla's side, obviously, than Enid's. But like when Scylla turned the light off after her mom turned the light, no, when she turned the light on after her mom turned the light off, I was like, you're in a room full of people. This not like only the two of you are going to be affected by that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's late at night. It's dark. Like turn the light. Everybody wants to sleep. Not, you know what I'm saying? Like it just was, I was like, ladies ladies well it's all right she got a comeuppance because then she started getting a bad headache yeah and she was and, like really um, sick yeah and it was awful because she got bad toxemia and she was like bring my husband bring my husband she genuinely was like i just want my husband so yeah. pardeep comes and yeah. basically finds out that she has got toxemia the mum is hearing this at the same time she's like oh my god i nearly died at childbirth don't be saying it's nothing i nearly died in childbirth because of this and then she starts worrying i thought well a bit rich now love do you know what i mean now, yeah. mm-hmm. what happened with the flying squad? Yet again, the flying squad were called, but they let them down. Da- yet again, they had to manage without the fi- flying squad, despite ringing them. What have the yeah. flying squad done to Heidi Thomas? <laughs> and here's here's the thing I don't understand. Dr. Turner is like, oh, they haven't even left yet because there's not an obstetrician. I'm like, okay, but there is a hospital, right? Like, are there people <laughs> in the hospital? Like... There may not be an obstetrician right at this moment, but, like, are you going to get one? Like, could you someone find one? Like, can you not? It's like, you know, it's like saying, like, oh, like, I'm not going to make dinner because I'm not hungry yet. Well, in an hour or two, you probably will be. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. Like, you need to start thinking about that. Or whatever time. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it's like you can't stop. Like, oh. Anyway, but also, time. every time the flying squad rock up, there's, like, four of them in the doorway. Yeah. So it's too surely many. being more, surely too being many. one man down wouldn't make that much difference. But also then like there's but but then to your point and not to jump ahead, but like when we get to Dr. Turner in the ambulance with Mrs. Tennant, he's the one doing the work. So like where's the team then? You know where's what I mean? Paramedic. Like, yeah. So like, anyway, anyway, back to Miss back to Scylla Singh. So okay. anyway, there's this like classic scene of tension, they're waiting in the corridor. Pardeep mm-hmm. Singh is doing prayers because he's really worried about his wife. He loves her. The mom is there seeing him pray and seeing how affected he is by his wife and his child. So I think yeah. she's like seeing how much he actually does love her. And yeah. she's and also worried the, about a child. But also he's worried about his wife. He's not just worried about... Yeah, yeah. Obviously, saying how much, seeing but, how much he yeah. loves her. Yeah. So then they have a forceps delivery and it's a boy. And how flaming cute was that kid? Oh my God, it was so oh cute. God, so sweet, so sweet. He was just a little chubby little baby. He was so cute. He cried, I'm you, baby. Every baby on this show is like a little angel dewdrop baby. They're so sweet. Every no, some of better than this. <laughs> this was a good one this week. It was good. <laughs> so ba- the baby cried. I cried. I'm really phenomenal. And it was just a really tense, lovely scene. And he cried. And then Pardeep meeting his baby. I mean, I mean, I've just got crying emojis here. And then oh, his grandma oh. in the background, Enid in the background, looking all upset and crying. I was just in bits. And then mm. Julian coming out and he was like, thank you so much. You're so amazing at medicine. And like, and then they had this scene about God is good. I thought it was really nice about that. Like, you know, it doesn't matter what faith it is. God is good. I yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Pardee went with uh, went to see his wife, but Grandma was watching over baby. Singh Enid was watching over the baby, and I just was like, "Oh!" <laughs> also, today recording this podcast is the first time I've put two and two together. That it's Silla Sing. Yeah, such a mouthful. <laughs> I was like, "Where's all of this bed? or something I'm missing?" <laughs> um, I'm like, is, then- "Is Silla Sing like some other thing that you that you are like?" 
I, yeah, I couldn't figure that out. Anyway, I thought it was a TV show. Like, I don't know what. Anyway, so then what you call Enid is like, oh, fixing my ideas. I forgot what's important. I'm sorry to both of you. Like, she really was. Like, it was the turning point oh, they wait, all needed. Did, did we say the thing about how she sat with the baby the whole night? while yes. her? Do- okay, sorry. I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, well, I was just... Yeah, it was really sweet because she basically she basically went into the nursery after whenever. And it was like, at, it was there was nobody else in the nursery. And she pulled up a chair right beside this baby. She was like, come on, little fella. Like, I just, you and me now. Or, or so, I don't know what she said, but she said something really darling. And then she basically, like, just sat there and, like, rubbed his tummy yeah. and, like, held his hand and just, oh, it was so, I was like, oh, it was the first time where I was like, you know what? Like, you are you have a sweet lady. Like, she was. Yeah, but this is what that. annoyed me, right? She's like, oh, if he, it's just still driving jobs. And the dad was like, oh, he's a bit young. And she was like, no, for party, right? She could have done that ages ago. So if it yeah. wasn't about racism, what was it about? Like if she could have done that ages ago. Well, it was it was Al. That's the that's whole what thing. I'm trying like, to say. There's, to Beth, there's yeah. No, there's no reason why this woman had a had any like cause to not like this man other than like prejudice. I'm sorry, but there just isn't. And also, it's not what prejudice, you know, it's who you know, isn't it? Prejudice, Absolutely. yes. But if it was racism, pure racism, I just think she wouldn't even after the baby was born. Yeah, true. Anyway, that's well, why I think it, she had an epiphany. It wasn't I mean, just that because you yeah. wouldn't be able to get past that just by seeing him pray and asking after his daughter, her daughter. Well, anyway, then Enid goes into labour and she actually has a full labour this time because I presume hers was very similar to her daughter's last time. She had mm. Tatsumi when she had a baby, and mm-hmm. um, she had a birth, and she the dad was there, and he was useless, and she was like, oh, and then still, I'd be like the dad, him. I'd have to go outside. I would very much as well. <laughs> like I hope in the he's future, like, uh, baby, he's like, can you call me when this is over? <laughs> you know, when you hear about people wanting their mums as birthing partners, I really hope in the future if Bob's has a baby, she's like not thinking she'll have to have godmothers. She's not having me. Uh, no, Bob's is gonna know you by now, by then, and she's gonna be like, no, my mom's not really up for it. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be outside, you know, I'll be waiting, I'll do everything, I'll be there at the hospital if she wants me. But oh, oh, maybe I could do it. For, I don't think I could. No, anyway, no, no, no. So she don't worry about that for right now, anyway. And it's a sister, and still is there to see her sister's been uh, being born, which is actually really cute. Yeah. And also, how weird would it be to have a sister that far apart with no other siblings? Oh, I yeah. mean, and also she's her nephew. What does she name the baby? Do we know? No, I don't. So think we never found out. Scylla's sister is aunt. She's I born an aunt. Really she's born yeah. an aunt. Yeah, her nephew's yeah. older. Than, the nephew's older than the aunt. Well, than her, yeah, yeah, yeah. They basically share the same birthday, pretty much. Yeah. And then, so the last scene basically is that the Sings are there, and he's got, and Pardeep's got his new uniform. With the with the dad with his father in law going off to the work uniform on the looks really good on him. He's it did. Really he is <laughs> yeah. good looking. And the yeah. Sings seem to have moved in with her parents now, so they're all getting them happy. So they could awesome. have just done that in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah, they could have done that in the yeah, because because even Mrs. Even Enid comes to her and says, "Do you want to come live with us?" Because like, listen, like I want you to be okay and everything. And yeah, she's but like, she did well, say part- it was without him. Well, that's the thing, because because then Scylla says like, "Oh well, can Party come too?" And she's like, "No." And she's like, "Well, then keep walking because I'm not I'm not going anywhere without my husband." So I mean, like clearly there was like enough room for everybody, but and Scylla knew that, which is why she asked. But the invitation wasn't extended to her. I'd probably go and live with them anyway husband. because I wouldn't want to sit in silence and get everyone to hate me in the shared house while we're eating. Uh, yeah, yeah, but. They must resent her. Yeah, they must do. The thing is, I just wouldn't want to be around my mean mom the whole time. Like, if my mom was going to, like, be that way, I'd just be like, no, you know, forget it. I'll just I look like... She's that mean. Oh, Becky, no, you're defending you the are. wrong person here. Sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me today. I don't either. <laughs> you're, like, on the side of villainy. You really are. <laughs> Good job we're not doing a World War II podcast today. Anyway, so... <laughs> you're like, well... <laughs> I think you misunderstood. <laughs> Like he's not as bad as that may i said a bit of a cow like may and you're like no <laughs> a bit of a cow you're like okay but even so like can you understand no i can't <laughs> <laughs> uh but they do make up in the end and it's really nice and it's really yeah. sweet so uh, we're we're all that that storyline ended well that must be so cute as well having like the two babies in the family at the same same time yeah Yeah. i'll tell you what though this episode was so sad for me and i even though that storyline ended quote nicely like it didn't because everything else in the episode was happening in tandem like alongside of it it just i was sobbing by the end you guys same same 
I'm betting oh. you know, like it was, I, I was just absolutely in tears. I'm so. not right now, but I just was going like by the end I was, oh my goodness. I was like, I, I didn't cry so much earlier, but like by the end I was, oh my gosh. I like full you know, tears. Just, just away before out. we go on to the next storyline, you know what I've noticed now about this series as well. Number one, obviously the fit men. Number two, yeah. the bold colors in decoration now. There's a lot of like stiff key blues, the maroon that the mm. Wilsons had. Like there's a lots mm-hmm. of bold colors in these brand new flats. Mm. Yeah, oh, wait, hair's you know, getting bigger. Yeah, bigger, absolutely. I just want direct I just reference make, to that with Val. Yeah, I just want to make a point actually because Mr. Singh um, and Mrs. Singer in this episode. So I was listening to our podcast from a couple of weeks ago where we talked about the Adu family who were from Ghana. Yeah, and we had made comments about that they were kind of rude to like Trixie and Val and you know, whatever, about something, something like, like vaccination. It wasn't rude. Or they were like... just defensive about the fact that they were educated. Like I thought that. But here, were... but here, yeah. But yeah. so here's my point. So like we had kind of made it that they were, and again, we, I don't think we were like so harsh, but we were just like, oh, they shouldn't have been that way. Or like they, they were just, you know, they spoke too harshly or something like that. But I, as I was listening to it, and again, I don't think we were like way out of line, but I just, I was like, no, I think we actually kind of missed the mark on that one because like, if you have, like he came from his home country he had a phd in his home country and like we've seen it and like you know i don't know what all of her qualifications were but like you know they were like accomplished educated successful people in their home country and then they immigrated to the uk and were really happy and proud to become uk citizens and everything but at the same time like they lost a lot in the translation from like one country to the next and just knowing how like lucille has dealt with issues how like potentially parjeet singh has dealt with issues like how other like people from different racial and cultural backgrounds in this show have like confronted like you know racism bigotry things like that like i i just feel like no their reaction made sense like and i just want to give them like a little bit more like compassion and justice for like their side of it in that exchange because i just i just think we might have missed the mark in terms of like interpreting the way that they acted with what their like experience was and like and even if they were just defensive and everything i think they had every right to be defensive you know but jen i think i was a bit like I thought Sister Hilda was a bit rude. Oh, okay. I can't remember. I do remember it. I don't remember it enough details to join this I, conversation. I listened to it and I just, and I can't remember exactly what we said, but I just was like, well, and I'll just say for myself, I just felt like I was kind of like, oh, I just, to me, I, my, my interpretation in the pod didn't have the understanding for the Adu family that I wished I had expressed at the time. And so I just wanted to like course correct on that one because to me, that's like a very significant and like real experience people do have. And when, and so I just, you know, anyways, I just wanted to, like, go back and, like, have a moment of reflection on that. Because I just... Also, you know, when just people do emigrate to Britain, like, they're often living and working in a second language. And I just think that in mm-hmm. itself... It's really hard. You, Alex, I you've seen... Me- something really awful. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? Was that bad? No, let's not say what we thought. <laughs> I didn't think No, it. just because the mood you're in today. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I mean, well, like, was... there's no, yeah, like, yeah, Alex... you're, right, you're right, and it's still courage as well as, like, you know, yeah. the actual language barrier and stuff. And the... Alex, we've traveled together, and I just, I can't speak even a language where I know a few words. I just won't utter it in another country. Yeah, I just look at you mute. and you speak. She turns mute yeah. whenever anyone tries to speak to her in another country. <laughs> and I look at it's Alex. It's really hard. And I expect her to speak for me. So to to just live and work in another language, I just think is Amazing. in itself, yeah, really challenging. <laughs> <laughs> that is about as good as my uh, English accent, honestly. I did six week course in Spanish when I was about uh, twenty. Yeah, anyway, t- you can tell. Yeah, you can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't even drink red wine. <laughs> it's like the way I'm in German. I'm like, ich bin zwölf Jahre alt. That's all I can remember. <laughs> Your accent's so good as well. It's just so fantastic, I know. <laughs> Should yeah. we talk about Jeannie? Oh, Jeannie. I oh, dream- this was. I just need to start by talking about Jeannie's yellow leotard. Oh, we have to discuss it. You oh girls, we have to discuss it. That was the, the, the most baggy perfect crotch. period perfect leotard I've ever seen. I was like, this is exactly what the time that it was at the time the scene Absolutely. with the hula hoop where they removed the hula hoop and made her gyrate without the hula hoop was the most <laughs> soul crushing soul destruct i can't even imagine having to film that for being on tv i would have died 
died. <laughs> like that would have just oh, I was so cringy. I was like curling up inside a thousand times. I cannot imagine that that poor girl who's just met them all that day as part of. Well, I don't know that day, but you know what I mean. Just met them all. No, she's no, she's not no, the major cast. No, she knew she knew she's been going and keep fit for loads of time. Oh, the you... actual actress in nutters. She's not. Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Oh, actors have to do way worse than that. Oh, uh, Jen, it was cringe, cringe, cringe. How many times have you watched an interview with people who are in like some steamy movie or whatever? And it's like, oh, well, you know, yeah, we were really lucky because we actually like had like a little bit of time to get to know each other before we had to do it. Like, like, okay, throw back to Bridgerton, like Luke Newton and Nicola Coughlin when they That's were different. talking this is about one woman. Their thing. Having to do that in front of a whole TV crew and a load of women. Oh, no, uh, no I know, but that's it. what I'm saying. Like, they were like, oh, we were really lucky because we had, you know, three years of working together in these characters before we had to do all that really intimate stuff in, in the show. But all the but the people who came before us, like, they had to just jump right into it. Like, in the yeah. first season, Reggie Jean Page, Reggie Jean, whatever his name is, and Phoebe Jennifer, they had to, like, literally meet each other and then, like, a week later just do all of that Ugh. stuff. So, I mean... Well, I'm with Lucille. It doesn't feel decent without the hula hoop. <laughs> but also, the the difference in clothing between Lucille and everyone else. The oh fullest skirt. She's Again, wearing a I'm full Lucille. maxi length skirt and a pair of high heels, by the way, to a gym class. So's Val, which is hilarious. Uh, the thing I really deeply related to is when like Val was trying to do the hula hoop moves and Trixie was like, and it's good to keep a smile on your face. And Val just has this like absolute like, face just looks like a squunched bun. I mean, it just is like... I thought her acting there was fantastic. I thought it was a brilliant Oh my scene. God. It's like, I it's just like felt a... so bad for that poor genie actress. Have you ever been in an exercise class where you're like trying to like, it's like dance hip hop cardio or whatever like that. And you're like really trying to follow along. And then all of a sudden you catch yourself in the mirror and you're just so horrified by how (laughs) you look. (laughs) You're just like, I'm going to melt into the ground. (laughs) Well, actually, it reminds me of, we went to a Hindu. Now, sadly, Jen, you weren't at the Hindu, but you were at the wedding, which we have referenced here on a bench. (laughs) Anyway. But the Hindu. What did we do? What was it? We did uh, Save the Last Dance. Yes, we did. And during the practice, I was dead good. I was oh, like yeah, learning it and doing really well. And then it got to the point where it got to the actual, we had to do it in front of the other group who'd learned the dance. Yeah, it's I fine. can do it. I had proper stage fright. Why do yeah. women do this and to each other? A group of our f- friends. I just couldn't do it. I know. Oh. I know. I'm not, I'm not confident physically. I saw I saw on Instagram one of these one of the people I follow she was like I'm getting married and she's like I love solo traveling so much that I'm going on my bachelorette party alone. And I was like <laughs> Wow, chef's kiss like doesn't that just sound so like i was like oh my god i know i love a hen party but like i also i i also just like that's just not like just skip it like it's i, it's used a, to love, it's, I think hen parties were all about the right time for me in life it's it's exactly <laughs> that kind of activity that just is like i don't want to be here i w- i honestly would rather like when i'm in those moments i'm like i wish i didn't have any friends like i wish i didn't have to do this <laughs> you know what i mean like because it's so awkward it's so I know awkward what you mean about forced fun and stuff yeah i used to be well into it it's only recently and i can't decide if it's because like of me knee and i'm tired all the time or because like i had less sleep since having a kid or it's just that i'm 43 now and i'm just miserable well a combination of all three so i i finished work the other day and i had to go to the grocery store on my way home or something like that and oh yeah it was i I had to go to the grocery store on my way home it was like tuesday or monday or tuesday and i literally got to the grocery store i parked and i sat in my car for 10 minutes looking at my phone because i had to like literally work up the energy to like go grocery shopping I had to like talk myself into it and I thought to myself I you know like a lot of a lot of my friends who have kids are just like oh I'm so tired I'm so sleep deprived like it's so busy like we've got so much going on that's all true but I thought are you is it because you're a parent or is it because you're just middle-aged like this is truly like a question that I have I'm like because I think if I had kids I would feel the exact same I would just be like because it's at a certain point it's like you're just in your 40s like yeah like like, whether you whether you had poor Enid having a baby at 44 Well, and that's the thing. I'm like, no matter what you've got going on, like you're still middle aged. Like you still are just like, oh, I want to go to bed. You know what I mean? Like that's I I I just had that thought. I'm like, are you? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to apologize to anyone listening for this absolute downer. We do apologize. (laughs) (laughs) I don't mean it in a bad way, but I just it's like, and I feel it a lot because like as a single woman who doesn't have any kids, I feel like there's this sense that if you're in that circumstance in life, that you're just like constantly taking vacations, constantly shopping for new clothes. Like every night is a manicure, and like 
a drink out with friends and like you're just what you know you're sleeping in all weekend long and you're just spending all your money on like whatever you want and it's just like all this like glamorous like I do anything like nice life it's that Taylor you have. Swift existence yeah yeah exactly that's just like oh like squad goals like every Saturday and it's like and I now granted I, I mean I I think I have a nice life but like I still have all the same responsibility as any other person in my, co- in my cohort and I mean and I'm just as tired as everybody else and I I don't have a child or like a husband that I have to manage or deal with or whatever like that but it doesn't mean I don't have all the other responsibilities and I'm not still just as like you know laden with all that so anyways that's all a little diatribe I think we should go a bit more upbeat now <laughs> just for our <laughs> listeners so let's go to the really lovely story of Jeannie and Frank Tennant and she has an abortion and um anyway Guys, right. <laughs> yeah sorry sorry should I, no, should I no surmise this? By this, this is a terrible should story. Su- should I summarize this in my like book review week tone? Yeah. She has an abortion and she dies. <laughs> anyway, next one. <laughs> oh, gee. And, one, and we're not making light of either one of those things. They are. It's terrible what happens to her. And I'm not even going to say much about the bigger thing because I just feel like I'm on my soapbox every single week. But it's terrible, terrible what happens to her. Well, and now we're also, just it over and over again. And it's they were terrible. both so well suited, so good. They look literally like they could be on Love Island. Yeah, they're like yeah. a movie star couple. So handsome, so beautiful, cute. They were kids, saving up for a house. house. They were actually buying their own home. I know. They were packing their belongings to move into that home. Oh, yeah. So He's sad. an electrician. She works he could the rewire shop. it. <laughs> he could rewire it. Yeah. To yeah. all 2024 safety regulations. Girls, there was a lot going on with her storyline. Like she had. Excessive she was like, she, she had what? Sorry, she found saliva. She Excessive saliva. Yeah, I was like, oh dear. Another terrifying pregnancy. Did she just that spit I didn't all over to Trixie? Yeah. Not, well, she, well, she tried not to. She didn't. She didn't. I don't think she actually did it. But she was in the keep fit group. She was. She was going to be an instructor potentially. She was in the the not pageant but showcase that they were yeah. going to have. Do you know what made me laugh? Actually, the way Trixie was saying, you don't go to keep fit, you know, without eating anything. Come after dinner, but also have a pudding. And I just thought that is so <laughs> different to the advice nowadays. <laughs> well, and also, did you see when she walked in and she was like, she's like, oh, it was my turn to bring the snacks, so I picked up three packets of custard creams, and I'm just. Like, you know what that's the so kind of girl i want in my office i can tell you i know so you're gonna work out for like an hour and then you're gonna eat five custom creams and then go home absolutely that's my kind of keep fit class, oh I, th- I think that's the way you should do it but i was just like oh that makes that's just hilarious like that's so funny but anyways so, anyway, and so she's got, she's got all this stuff going for her but then she finds out like she she thinks she's, she's just got feeling seven off. months old as well isn't she seven months old seven boy. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's just feeling a bit off. And so then, you know, she's with Trixie in a fitting for the showcase outfit, which was so cute. It was like this red, you know, dress, like mini dress with fringe and had all these jewels on it and whatever. And then Trixie's like, well, the saliva may be a, may be a sign of pregnancy. Like, you should really go see Dr. Turner. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then she goes to see Dr. Turner and he's like, yeah yeah you're pregnant and she just is like I can't have this baby and then he's like well he's like I know but go home and talk to your husband and then like you know you'll start to feel happier about it which I just was like I didn't I mean normally I'm a Dr. Turner fan but I just did not like his attitude with this that was I think this I think this is the point I think they were trying to reflect because Trixie and him both said how redundant and how impotent they felt in this situation because he didn't have any power to do anything apart from be like and also bearing in mind both of them have said this to countless number of women who have been in this as desperate as Jeannie was in this situation. And they have gone home and they have talked about it and they have just carried on as normal because it was quite normal to have ridiculous amounts of kids in those days. Well, but also like, think about it too. Like, I mean, the, and I, I don't know why, I guess I'm like overly relating here, but like when you deal with people who have like really terrible issues at times when someone has something that's like terrible for them but like on your radar maybe not quote as bad as other people have it yeah you you might just be like un it's it's not you're not you're not trying to be this way but you're somehow you're just the like what that person needs in that moment you're not giving it to them because you're devaluing their experience and like I think because both Dr. Turner and Trixie everybody on the show who's in the medical professional side of it has dealt with unwed moms moms who are like you know like they're like an underage pregnancy like, you know like any any number of situations where yeah the pregnancy is truly going to result in something tragic yeah, but and also to them case... it's like it's only a third pregnancy to them there's people with like 12 kids well, to them they're like oh it's a third like that's okay there's seven it's, you, it's, it's also they're loving it's no domestic violence it's a loving home they're about yeah. to buy their own home they're in a good position they're thinking oh actually this will probably be a blessing for your family like and, and for well, a lot of couples like a not... surprise pregnancy is not really ultimate yeah. i mean like how many people do we know or how many people are our age that like 
potentially they were the surprise, right? Like we we know a lot of people who they are here. They, they it was not a planned thing that their parents yeah. wanted to do, but then and they not, like did, and it was fine. So and not that their best play, it, not that it'd be a blessing, but they're in a a good situation where they can cope yeah, with it. My point being, they're yeah. thinking, oh, they'll be they'll love it when it comes. It'll they'll think it's a blessing afterwards. Is my point? That's right. They're, they're quite blasé. I think is the word I'm looking. I think the doctors yeah. and professionals are a they're bit not, like, oh, it's you know, you're fine. They're not giving you know it what? the seriousness that that Mrs. Te- that Jeannie certainly wants it to be. Yeah. Do you know what annoyed me though? Jeannie then went to Trixie and she's like, "Oh, I can't do the display now." Yes, she can. Yes. <laughs> He's just standing on stage twirling a hula hoop. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things. <laughs> she said she'd make she'd change it around as well, so she wouldn't have oh, to stand like, there. Oh my god, Jeannie. <laughs> I can't believe you decided to go this way. Do you know what got me? She missed keep, keep Fit for an abortion. I can't believe she missed Keep Fit. <laughs> I well, thought... she used that as the excuse, didn't she? I, I thought yeah, that the... Maybe she I did miss Keep Trixie Fit. And the, I thought that Trixie and the husband were going to cross paths, and then that's how they were going to figure out that something fishy yeah. was going on. They never did, but I thought... Because she told them both that they were... The other was the issue, you know what I mean? She was like, oh, I felt a bit dodgy. And then she said to her husband, like, oh, I had Keep Fit. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. you know... So then oh. Trixie, after five years, five years... She was absolutely outraged. Her hairdryer gave up the goat. So she went to the, the shop. The flimsiest, the flimsiest, <laughs> tiniest travel hairdryer. But it sounded oh. quite heavy, though, to be fair. Oh, I was, that hair, hairdryer looked massive. Also, by the way, like five years is pretty good. I mean, I nowadays know. stuff I like know. breaks just the way like she's six like, months. After five years, they're angry. But anyway, oh, wait, so wait, she wait, takes let's it. Just, let's, just, let's just pause for There's a point second. to this. No, hang on. There's a point to my story. No, I need to tell my electrical story. Well, hang on. You can tell it in a second. So, <laughs> oh, you want both of you? Both got pouts on you. Go. I've got an epilator that's 34 years old. What? I can't believe yeah. the thing about that is that you use an epilator, they kill. I don't, yeah, I don't you really use it anymore. Maybe it's not. I, I do think, still think it's going, but isn't that insane? It was are, a you broad... the, are you the original owner? Yeah. Yeah, I've not got a second hand epilator. <laughs> How old were you when you had an epilator? Well, you said 34 years old, Bex. Oh, no. No, I take it back. <laughs> I was like, I know, well, I know how old we are, but that's still like... 30, old we are? 30 years old. It's 30 years old. Okay, that makes more sense. That Even then, I'm sense. just... You, you're a hard as nails teenager. Jen, well, you do your bit. Come on. Okay, so mine is actually about the storyline. I just want to say that the reason why... Mine was appropriate. <laughs> the, re- the reason why Jeannie is so adamant that she has to have one is because she came from a family of seven. Her mom had seven kids in 11 years, which don't get me started. And the cycle of pregnancy and childbirth had such an effect on her mental health that she was in and out of Lynchmere, the mental yeah. hospital where Cynthia went. Yeah. And she's like, I don't want to end up that way. Me and my husband decided we were going to have two and that's all we're having. And she's like, what about what I want? What about what women want? Yeah. And so that's why she was just determined because she advocated with Dr. Turner. She's like, you give me an abortion. You go and tell them that it's life-threatening or whatever you have to tell them to give me an abortion. He's like, I can't do that. And then she was like, okay, well, you know what? Then I'm solving this problem on my own. Well, she didn't say that to him, but then she said it to herself. And then that's when she did what she did. But I just feel like that's important content to understand why she chose to have the abortion the way that she did so that's what i want to say so she gets this pink hair dryer and takes it to the shop that she has a little job on the side yeah she's really trying to save it she's like every penny counts Jeannie, all Jeannie works at the little shop yeah, yeah yes yeah. and so trixie takes it there and trixie says to her oh Jeannie, you look a bit green about the gills she looks like she's been dug up she looked yeah. absolutely horrendous. There was no color on her face. Like, they literally blanked out her lips, her eyebrows, her eyelids. She looked like well, a ghost. She looked but terrible. Then, when her husband got home, she looked like she had silver, like, a lip. She looked blue. Red. Blue. Yeah, awful. Yeah. And she was like, oh, I just feel a bit under the weather. And he was like, oh, okay, I guess. And then she's, like, actively, like, she's she has, like, these violent tremors from having such an intense fever that she feels like she's ice cold. And he's like, she's like, oh, just hold me and I'll get warmer. And I'm like, you're, and he's like, okay, I guess I will. I'm like, sir, call the ambulance. Well, they called Dr. Turner. The and I was a bit right like, now. no, call the ambulance, mate. She literally looks like she died three days ago. Well, and then he's just laying next to her. And I couldn't tell if he was supposed to have, like, fallen asleep and woken up or whatever. But then, like, do you know what I thought? I thought was going to happen was he was going to fall asleep and she'd he'd wake up and she'd be dead. But I did think that too. 
Well, she almost was, though. Honestly, you guys. Because she was unconscious, and then that's when he was like, oh my god, Jeannie! And then he ran, and he called Dr. Turner. And when Dr. Turner came, he, like, had to, like, you know, yell at her and everything, and he had to do that thing where you put your knuckles on someone's, like, chest bone and, like, like shake, and uh, not shake, but, like, rub really hard, which is, like, really painful, and then that will, like, revive people usually if they're mm. passed out. And... Like, I've seen people do it in, like, emergency situations and stuff. And, like, it really does bring people back because it's really uncomfortable if you do it with the right pressure. And she was like, oh. And then the flying squad comes. Well, he was like, doing... tell me what happened. And she was like, how, how long ago did you do this? She was like, two days ago. Like, it sounded like she'd been dug off. So hor- <laughs> yeah, she sounded horrible. <laughs> Sorry. She sounded so bad. It's a really serious situation. We are taking it seriously. It I is- need to talk about... Magic. I need to wrap <laughs> Dr. Turner's CPR Sorry. skills. Oh, Bex, go off, because this was driving me crazy. <laughs> he wasn't pumping hard fast enough. Also, he wasn't pumping in the right place. And on, hang on, hang on. Before we talk about this, I just want to say one more thing. Okay. Dr. Turner said, did the baby come away? So away. we just got back from there. Oh. But I will accept it from a medical professional that was Dr. Turner. Carry on, sorry. There you go, there you go. So I don't know how they publicise CPR in America, Jen, but we're told that you have to pump the chest to the rhythm of the Bee Gees staying, staying alive. Staying alive. That's what they do here too, yeah. Oh, okay, bum, that's bum, a universal bum, thing. Bum. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And also he gave up very quickly. Yeah, and he didn't do any, like, mouth-to-mouth resuscitation, which is fine. But also, he was going so low on her torso, too. Like, I was like, you have to press higher. Like, it was like, you're going to just, like, bruise her kidney or something. I know, that's not where your kidneys are. But, like, he was he was doing it, like, on the soft part. Like, you have to do it, like, where the, the point heart is. The point is. is, why the hell was he doing it and not an absolute uh, uh, paramedic in the- Well, exactly. Yeah, where, was, where was the flying squad crew that was supposed to help? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my. And why did they, like, arrive and, like, uh, now- Wait, yeah. no, he didn't call the flying squad for them. No, he didn't. He just no, called it a regular ambulance. ambulance. Well, but the ambulance, isn't that the same thing, basically? No. It's not? No, no. paramedic, it's just, it's just an ambulance, whereas just flying squad like mean a just specialist an ambulance? Team. Well, the flying squad are trained to deliver babies. Ambulance cover lots of situations. Yeah, I know. So why didn't the ambulance have people inside of it that could help her while they're driving her to the hospital? Well, yeah. It should have had a paramedic. It yeah. should have, but it shouldn't have had a flying squad member in there. Oh, Just well, no, that's fine. Right that's fine yeah yeah you know i'll take that criticism absolutely but like there should have been another member of the crew there and like i don't know what they had in the 1960s but like where's the adrenaline where's the other stuff where's the like the bag that you put over your nose and mouth where they go squish 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 and then like air goes in you like where's anything else like i just feel like they did nothing they literally laid her on a bench well then frank actually manages to get to the hospital they must have got someone to look after the kids he gets to the hospital And he's like, I don't understand. Like, my sister had a miscarriage. And then Dr. Turner had to explain that, obviously, you know, she'd actually got rid of the baby and how it happened. And, oh, and he was just really oh, angry at Dr. Terrible. Turner. Dr. Turner was already feeling awful anyway. Ugh. I know. And I actually really felt for Dr. Turner because when he went home to Sheila, I was talking to her. I was like, oh, man, this sucks. Like, I get it, dude. I felt bad for him. I felt really bad for him. Well, and yeah, Trixie but then the next too. day, they're all talking in the morning over some eggs. And Sister Frances mm-hmm. was saying about, you know, about the streptococcus infection. Do you think it's the same? Oh, she was on the ball. Yes, well done, Sister Frances. And we'll talk about her in a minute because she wasn't having a great oh, day. Oh, like it's the same thing that we've seen other women yeah. have. And yeah, Valerie yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. I don't care who it is. I just know it's like she was really angry. And again, well, she says, like, I want to ring, I want to wring her neck or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get my hand. I want to get my hands on the person who's done that. Well, and then Sister Monica Jones says, like, it's like you're missing. She kind of, I can't remember what she says, but she's like, you're missing the forest for the trees. Like, like it's not really the the issue. Isn't that she had the infection? The issue is that like it happened at all, and that this poor lady died. Which I mean, fair, but yeah. Know, and then like, Sister Francis was also asking, like, how do they find the people who do this? And then Sister Monica Joe Mojo. She's she oh, does a that's... lovely speech about necessity finds a way. It's always been yeah. thus. It shall always be thus. And basically, this that's what she says. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sergeant Wolf is obviously because obviously it's a she dies. They have to look into it. They have to look into it as a criminal offence as well. Yeah. And so Sergeant Wolf's looking into it. And Trixie goes to interview Trixie, and Trixie's really upset. And she's just like, you know, I'm really angry about the whole situation. I'm uh, most upset about the fact that I couldn't do anything to help her at all. And it's just, you know, we can't ever do anything. All these women are doing this because we can't help them. It's just really awful. Um... And then Frank has this, this is actually something, again, this is a not a spoiler because this is just, you know, part of the future coming, but watch out for this. Frank saying that she charged seven pounds. He knows that because he knows that yeah. much was missing. And that's a key yeah, piece yeah. of information. Is this storyline going to come to a head this season, do you think? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, 
I thought, well, firstly, I thought it was a bit disrespectful that they went ahead with the hula hoop display. Oh, no, I thought it was like a tribute oh, no, to I, her. Yeah, I thought the same. I liked, I really liked when Trixie and Val said we're doing this for her. Yeah, and I also, can I just nice. say, I've never been as emotional about someone getting a hairdryer back in my life. Oh my god, I was sobbing by oh this my god. point. No, for I me it sobbing. was the help wanted sign in the window because I'm just like life just goes oh, on for everybody else. Also, I, I know, put it was a I mega hula hoop routine to be fair, Bex. It was mega. Well, I put a note saying I couldn't think of anything worse than going to watch a group of women dancing with hula hoops. Well, do you know what? I'm gonna start a troupe and you're gonna have to come watch. <laughs> I'm gonna go on Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> and they'll be like, get out. <laughs> After my knee surgery, I'll be there hula hooping. We'll call it something <laughs> cool, like I can't think of something right now, but it'll be great. Hula group. You're gonna, you're gonna instead of keep fit, you're gonna be like get fit. Yeah. Something I don't know. We'll think of a good name. Something yeah. about old ladies. <laughs> Speaking of old ladies, one old lady this time, she's not that old. Take that back, nose crane. She got my goat this week. Why? My goat. Because she was oh. really mean to Sister Frances. Oh, when was she, she mean, though? Bit, well, she's been cutting with Sister Frances the whole time, hasn't she? Yeah, I thought she was really judgmental and, she, and mean. Poor Frances, she was there. Sister Frances saying that she's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm like a well-oiled machine on this now. And she's like, well, not, a bit, not before time. And I thought, oh, God, don't put her confidence down like that. Yeah. At least she's not calling it, she stopped calling her a dead leg, though. Well, that's well, that's only a tiny bit of progress, isn't it, really? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then also, so we talk about Sister Frances, Sheila and Julianne, uh, Sister Julianne saying how they don't know her and like they're a bit worried about her. She's very quiet. And they didn't really resolve it. To, to oh, them, to that was a deleted scene for me. I didn't see that part. Oh, yeah, no, they, they this... did. I think they did resolve. Yeah, because say... Sister Frances prayed with Sister Julianne in chapel. Yeah, but they didn't seem to really resolve anything still because when, when Sister Ju they were just starting to pray, and then Sister Hilda came in and says, Sister Julianne, Edna's about to have this baby. Was it Edith, Edna? Is about to have this baby. You've got Enid. to go. Enid. But also the other thing that I felt really bad for for Sister Frances was she was like scratching her arm and she had a ringworm oh, and it was ringworm. in front of everyone. Like it was just, I just felt so sorry for her. It's really embarrassing. Yeah. And gross. It's like dirty people get that. And Sister, and Sister Julianne was like, yes, dirty people do get that. Along with other clean people near them, and I thought you really could have worded that nice. Just chewing well, no, down. Honestly, okay, you you that scene was actually beautiful, and you just didn't do anything. <laughs> it. No, I think. Well, firstly, I think Sister Julianne should have been taking Sister Frances under a wing. Like she should have stepped up like this a few weeks ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I need to talk about Phyllis still because yeah. I loved oh, it when she was going out with Sergeant Wolf. And did you notice when Val said to her, "Where are you going in your next best two piece?" <laughs> like it wasn't good enough to go in her best suit. She's gone in her next best. But what oh. I love about that, the fact that she's going to that photo the photography ex exhibition in Soho, is that she was really excited for the parking meter systems there. Like she was oh, like, God. "I just want a chance to use the new parking meter systems in Soho." <laughs> Absolutely loved it. I tell you what else it was. It was a really sweet little moment between Sergeant Wolf and her because they were they were obviously getting on well. Cause she was like, "Oh, you turned out well for the clubs and stuff." Like, look at look at Baloo, whatever he was called. I don't know. But then he like obviously admitted that he didn't really know much about the arts and stuff, and he was just trying to impress her and stuff. And I thought it was actually really sweet that that moment. Like, at least she, she didn't take it. Mass she wasn't nasty to him over it. She didn't like berate him over it or anything. But then she yeah. was like, "Right, I'm off now." And she could have given him a lift back to Poplar. Did she not? No. <laughs> She just left he him. got there on his own. He was going to get home on his own. <laughs> <laughs> also, Sister Monica Joe and Mojo loving Doctor Who. And, and oh, that really am the same as Nurse Crane. I hate Doctor Who as well. But that's My not really a point. My mom loves it and I just can't. Does she? Yeah. Oh it's God. like, oh, it's, it, it's a, 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 the new one's just started. And I'm just like, I, she she watches it by herself. I'm like, you know what? Go off. Like, do your I own just, thing. I just but. can't. I'm with I'm with Nurse Crane about like people being in, prancing around in costume. But at the same time, Mojo was loving it so much. Oh. Just let her watch it, everyone. Don't try and listen to the wireless. Shut up and just you know, let her you watch know it. The, you know. And, I, and I, I, I apologize if I incur the do wrath of Doctor Who fans here, including the one Whovians. in my own home. Whovians. But it just feels like a TV show that, like, is written by kids where, you know, when you're a kid and you're, like, playing make-believe and it's like, well, this is, like, the rules of the game. And then you, like, establish the rules. And you're like, you're this and you're this and you're this. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, how do we get out of this one? It's like, wait, I've got a magic button. And, like, now I can push this. And, like, oh, yeah. like, the space-time continuum. Like, well, I guess it never worked that way before. But, like, you know, what if I do this this time? You know, it's just like, we've okay, spoken about whatever. this before. I'm like, pretty sure it's like, Rob, I hate, I 
like hate, LARPing. hate role playing games. Like, yeah. where she's like, well, oh, do this. Like, no. Well, it's like, it's like, oh, I've got the, like, I just saw one. I didn't watch it because I was like, I, I just can't. But it was like, I just saw one when, where they were like, oh, this is the worst demon that we've ever encountered in the whole of the universe. And it's like, you know, they're they're a threat to the whole thing or something. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna kill the TARDIS or whatever. I don't know. And so they go into the TARDIS and it's like all like shaking and like, you know, steam's coming out and like things are like popping off or whatever. And it's like, we've never been up against something like this before. This is, a, you know, this is an existential threat. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, what if I blah? And then he like, they do blah, blah, blah. And then it's it's like, oh, okay, we, we got out of it. And it's just like, are you kidding me? Like, Do you know what? It reminds me of a conversation I had with my husband recently. We were talking <sighs> about the bath because we used to have to play mermaid if we were there in the bath, like one of us, whoever was doing it. Oh, and I was Bob's, like, oh, yeah. Josh, but you know what? I think I'm going to miss this. Paper. Yeah. Oh. What do you, what do you say, all? Well, one day we're going to miss this. We're going to miss this. And, Joe, and he was just like, we're not. And we go. <laughs> <laughs> because me and I play mermaids with my niece and we, and we played it with Bob's. Well, there that you've caused that for us, and uh, yeah, we're just yeah. like, yeah. Well, not, I'm glad yeah. that you have to do it as well. Not as much anymore. I let it go on her iPad. <laughs> well, now I'm not even allowed in the bathroom, so I win. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Doctor Who link in this, I did wonder yeah. if that's why Jeannie and Frank's surname was Tennant, and I was like, was David Tennant the Doctor Who? No, no, Ooh. he was Doctor Who like a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Was it this, oh, this, 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 but he was inspired. Now. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe uh, that was um, Heidi's favorite Doctor. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. If there was maybe. any, if there was any Doctor I would want to watch of all the ones I've heard about, I would be willing to watch his just because I think he's so good. But not because I'm interested in the show. No, so. you still couldn't convince me. Yeah. Oh, but so wait. So we didn't finish talking about Phyllis and, and Sergeant Wolf on their date. So he's yeah, basically like, he's like, oh, I found this art exhibition in Soho and da 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 da. And she's like, oh, I'm not familiar with his work. Like, and he's like, he's like, but that sounds really interesting. And he's like, well, would you we want to go together? And she was like, um, okay, I guess. And yeah, I mean, she didn't say it that way, but she was like, yeah, okay. And he was like, okay. So then they go and and he's trying to like act like he knows what he's talking about when they're walking in. And she's like, well, I don't know anything about him. Like, you've you've got me beat on this one. And he was like, yeah, all right. Well, it happened to be that when they walked in, it was very like Love Actually in the art gallery in that movie where like everyone's naked except they have like Santa Claus hats on their bits and stuff. And in this one, it was like all butts. Like all you saw was just like naked photos. And like the one that I saw was just like just butts. Yeah. And so they both were kind of like, um, wait a minute. And then they and then they finished looking around and they're clearly like on their way out. And he's like, oh, man, he's like, I really screwed up. He's like, I, I feel embarrassed. Like I should have like looked in more to this than I did. I did because I just thought I was trying to be like so cultured and so cool and whatever and she's like well that's okay you know like you know better luck next time or whatever and he's like oh he's like well do you want to like go get a coffee we can like plan our next time out or whatever and sh that's when she said the thing about it. she's like no that I'm good I, I gotta get back to my parking meter like I'll see you later and then she just literally like walked up <laughs> he was left standing there it's not funny but I just I said I've... this yeah we've we've we have talked about this Jen I know I know You've literally told me off on the pub for not listening before. <laughs> I know. Should we do Heroes and Zeros? Has anyone got anything else? Nurse Dyer and Nurse... Lucille? Lucille? What's her surname? Lucille Thompson. Anderson. Thompson? Anderson. 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 Oh, wait, so you're okay, doing your Hero and Zero, Steel, right? They're on a tropical diseases course. When? This week? Yeah, that's oh, why I... they went around. Oh, I missed that. I missed that. That must have been in, my, in the deleted scenes for me. Right, Jen, do you want to go first on your heroes and zeros? I think I have two zeros, but yeah, I will go first. Okay, so my first, my, I'll do my, I'll do my zero first. So my zero, even though I just summed it up and everything, and I know I've been like harping on this, but my zero is going to be Sergeant Wolf and trying to go on a date with Miss Crane because Phyllis, a date with Phyllis. So Nurse Crane is what I meant to say. <sighs> it's just not gonna work he needs to stop it's just really not gonna work and the thing i actually heard which i thought was like really amazing advice and i think this applies to a lot of things in life but the woman was talking about romantic relationships but she said you can never say the wrong thing to the right person and i feel like sergeant wolf is saying anything to the wrong person and it's always the wrong thing and it's just like you've got to give up the ghost like it you asked her out she doesn't want to go out with you she did the polite go out thing it, like it like it just I was just like it's getting so painful and I'm just I, I can't and I, I particularly chose that one because I don't want to have a whole long thing about some of the truly sad and tragic parts of this episode because I just can't bear it but I'm just like bud you got to move on and he just got to get a zero because 
we can't keep doing this. And then my hero is going to be the genuine lols that I got at the beginning of the episode during the Keep Fit class. Just seeing the women in their outfits <laughs> was so fabulous and like the fact that like poor genie tenant was wearing tights and that like horrifying jersey oh. leotard that was like so bunchy around her crotch and then you know val wearing and and Lucille wearing like, absolute like high heel show shoes at a gym class and then lucille like feeling so immodest and she's wearing a floor length skirt like a very voluminous like floor length skirt at, a, at again an exercise class and then then they were all gonna eat cookies at the end i just was like this is just the only comedy respite that we're gonna get and i was like amen oh wait and actually i have an honorable mention because i meant to say this when we were talking about it but then i then i just didn't get to it but i wanted to say quick positive to sister francis because she has a line when sister julianne is cleaning her arm because she has the ringworm and Sister Francis is talking about, you know, being new and how hard it is to be new. And she says there's, and then Sister Julian says, there are so many adjustments to make when one is new. And then Sister Francis says, every day is full of things I need to ask or remember or learn how to do. And then Sister Julian says like, yeah, and every day you're going to get better and da da da. And it's actually a really nice scene, but I just like, I'm, I'm new at my job and I've definitely gotten a lot better. But when you are in a position where other people around you know what they're doing and you don't yet and you know you will but you just still are learning it's really 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 hard and it's really it can feel really isolating you can feel really incompetent you can feel you know just like a lot of different type of things and I just felt like that was just a really it was a very short scene and it wasn't like a huge thing but I just really liked the fact that you know she kind of had that moment because I feel like if what you guys are saying about they sister Julian and the others were talking about how they didn't really get to know her that much so far that you know it's like she's just working so hard to just like get up to speed with everyone I'm sure she's not acting like her real normal self and I don't know I just had like a real deep moment of like feeling like related to that scene so yeah. I did two heroes but anyway you felt seen in that scene I did I felt Best. s-e-e-n in that s-c-e-n-e yep yeah my zero is going to be everybody gaslighting genie into being like just get on with it like you're not happy about it but make do amend yeah mm-hmm. and no one actually took her seriously and um, and it was a really difficult situation but yeah everybody gaslighting genie and then my hero is going to be sister francis because she is like the super sleuth that knows that it's the same abortionist love her love her yeah 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 yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah. okay my zero this week i'm gonna do a gen and do it backwards because i'm last as well yeah gonna have to see my hero and it's gonna be weird so my zero is Nurse Crane. Oh. Um, well, only because I just thought she was just unusually and uncharacteristically and unnecessarily harsh on Sister Francis. Yeah. I just I'm, thought I'm it was just no need with... to be as rude as she is to her. And I just think that's not going to help her confidence. If anything, it's going to knock it. And I just don't see why she would do it. I just don't. I just think it's uncharacteristically bad for her. I don't like it. Mm. Down with, with Nurse Crane today. My hero, hear me out, is Toxemia. Because okay. if it wasn't for toxemia, Scylla and her mum would not be talking right now. If she'd have had a normal birth and they hadn't been there or whatever, she might not have even got to know the baby or seen it or anything. But, if it, but she nearly died. Well, anyway. we don't know. We don't know because she was a bit of a cow. So... <laughs> it was not. <laughs> I knew Becky was going to say something. She's not. So that's my <laughs> hero because I feel like, yes, it's an unusual hero. And I did it because I thought other people would take mine. So, yeah, I just think that, it, yeah, I just think it's, you know, it's really nice that they actually got back together. And I love that for them as a, yeah. as a mother with a daughter. I just, it, as Sheila was saying, she can't imagine ever falling out with her. Yeah, I'm a daughter, bit like that. I can't, can't imagine my daughter being a grown up either. You can't imagine being that estranged from somebody. Like, you feel like you just forgive them anything. Yeah, exactly. So, but again, she's she's right. Like they're adults from different generations now, and that's what you know the future holds. But really, mm. yeah. Didn't didn't the movie Father of the Bride have a storyline like this? Yes, like the Father of the Bride two. The mom two. They didn't they didn't fall out, but yeah, they had the yeah. two babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and it was a boy and a girl as well. Yeah, I was actually doing the abortion in that film. <laughs> Is Father of the Bride a Nancy Myers movie, or is that somebody else? I have no idea. Because in Nancy Myers, you know, like in You've Got Mail, like Tom 
Hanks, his father, now granted, it's the, it's not the women who are having the babies because the father marries someone super young and then he has two kids with a super young wife and the super young wife is like Tom Hanks' age. And so he is an uncle, but his... Yeah, it is. Nancy Mays. Yeah. Father of the Bride. Yeah, see? And yeah. she just loves the age gap brother-sister relationship. So very Nancy Myers storyline this week. This is a cracking film. Yeah. Anyway, we haven't got time to do any uh, emails, so I'll do it next week. But thank you so much for listening, everyone. Next week, we will be doing Series 8, Episode 5. So if you want to mm-hmm. watch and then listen along with us, that would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for listening. Follow us on X, slash Twitter, Instagram, all that. And then call TikTok. the people with my f- at gmail.com. We're on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> that's how closely Bex follows us on social media. No, I just said I just said that because I know we're not, and I was like, "That's gonna annoy you." Because I know that's the only platform we're not on. I really appreciate that. So thanks, yeah, thanks for listening. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye.